There are three simple single chip ways to add pins to a microcontroller or microcontroller breakout board like an Arduino. Let's talk about multiplexers, demultiplexers, decoders, and analog switches. They're all kind of the same thing. A multiplexer chip takes inputs and condenses them down to one output based on address lines. The address lines select which of the inputs goes to the output. So if you had eight inputs, two to the three equals eight, so you need three address lines and of course one data line to read those eight inputs. You can only read one at a time and it's not tri-state, you're only reading a digital signal. But you could select whichever one you need at the time or you could just go round robin and read them all in sequence. If you add other chips, there are ways to save even more pins, but this is the simple single chip version. So you can read two to the n inputs if you're using n plus one microcontroller pins. A DMUX is the opposite. This time your microcontroller is specifying a data line and where it goes, and it's providing it to one of however many outputs. Once again, not tri-state. And in addition, only one of them can be on at a time. Everything is going to be zero, except for one of them that might be zero or one, whichever one is connected. So once again, it's two to the n outputs given n plus one pins on your microcontroller. But you can't send multiple outputs at the same time. This is only useful for something like an enable signal or a drive. Like if you're driving limbs on a robot or something and you have four different outputs for whichever limb to go which way or something, like you're triggering an H bridge, that would work fine. The other thing though is you're changing these address pins to change where this goes. So if you have a high signal, as you're changing the address pins, the electronics are not going to be perfect. This is combinational. So you could get that one flipping around as the address pins change before it settles on the actual correct output. So you're going to need, well, it might not matter. If it doesn't matter, great. But you might need to turn this input low when you change the address pins to make sure whatever it is doesn't get activated until the address pins have settled. So that's an issue. A decoder saves you a pin. If you don't worry about that spurious activation, if all you care about is giving a signal to something all the time, you can use a decoder, which is doing the exact same thing as if you just had a one permanently on. The idea of a decoder is you specify which one to turn on and it turns it on, but it's the same thing. So that just saves you a pin, so now it's two to the N for N. There's one more option though. It is the single chip solid state way to actually add tri-state input and output pins to a microcontroller. It's an analog switch, which is basically a MUX and a DMUX in one, but it also handles tri-state. So you have one pin to your microcontroller, however many, to whatever, and your address lines, so this would still be, you know, eight, three, and one. But an analog switch is a tricky little bi-directional device that actually connects as if it were a physical switch. The, the electronics don't work that way, but the result is the same. If you have a high here, it'll put a high over there. If you have a low here, it'll put a low over there. And if your microcontroller pin is tri-state, it'll put nothing over there. But it works the same way. If your microcontroller pin is tri-state and one of these is giving a signal, then that'll come across. There, it's, it, it's like an automatic detection or something. And you'll get, th there's resistance in here. It's something like, you know, 100 ohms. You can get better and worse ones, but that's no big deal. For digital, it doesn't matter at all. But the benefit of this, it is tri-state, so you could actually hook it up to one of your analog pins. So you could read eight analog sensors one at a time by hooking it up through an analog switch into your analog pin on your microcontroller. It has the same problem as before with spurious activations as you change the address pins if you're using it as an output. So that'll have to not matter or you'll have to make sure you're not sending a bad signal that is gonna mess things up. And you can only have one at a time still. So that's the, the biggest limitation of this method is you can only have one at a time input or output, but you do have the option of actually extending your tri-state pins with just a single chip. So if this suits your needs, there you go. Coming up, I'm going to discuss the shift register and the addressable latch as other options with more flexibility or fewer pins. For now, I'll be seeing you.